might see me from a distance being loud and crazy in this. It's not arrogance, it's not cockiness, it's not ego. This is who I am and I, I love what I'm doing. I love the clients I work with. I love the business I'm in. I love that I get to talk to business owners. So even that group that doesn't like you, stop worrying about it. Um, if something's really bothering you, why not just, you know, if there's an elephant in the room, introduce it. Hey, something's not right here. What's going on? And you'll find out that most of the time it's a misunderstanding that you didn't connect right. All right, welcome back to the Cannonball Mindset. And this week, this is a cool episode because I haven't known this guy long, but you would have thought that we've known each other for years. Like, you know how sometimes you just instantly connect with somebody? That's the first, I don't even know, I don't even know how we got to that first call, but we ended up talking, we ended up talking for an hour. I'm sitting with Paul Foss, owner, founder, CEO of ringboost.com, which if you don't know what ringboost.com is, you will by the end of this episode and you will know why you need it. It's the craziest, most incredible company I think I've ever, just the whole innovation of the company I think is awesome. Um, but he's also going to speak about what I think is his superpower, and that is the art of connection. The art of connection and really self-branding. Self-branding. Wouldn't you say self-branding is something you're like... Absolutely. Like what, what's the and, and you have a company that really revolves around some sort of self branding, but for you, when did you realize that self branding was was so important? Uh, I think it was probably um, maybe 15, 20 years ago when you know the products I always sold um, you could buy from anybody else or a lot of them you can get anywhere else. So I realized that the one key differentiator was me. Like you can't get me from anybody else. Yeah. So it, you know, you could argue. I think I, you know, what I heard it best was uh, a sales trainer once told me. He's like, "Look, you could just take someone else's brochure, get a sharpie, cross your name out, cross their name out, put your name on it, because it's the same." Blah 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 blah. We do this really good. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Right. And I was like, "Well, the one thing that no one's ever going to have is me. Yeah. I am different. So if I could be me and be out there, and everyone knows Paul, like I separate myself from the pack. So instead of me selling a specific product, like." I sell me and what I do well and how much I care, what my heart is. And then ultimately I could sell anything, you know, I could introduce other people because people trust who I am. It's not about the one item I'm selling or the individual product. And so I think personal brand and who you are, especially in, in the increased digital age where, you know, the, the, the playing field has been leveled uh, by everybody. Well, you can't level me. Like I am unique and, and my voice is unique. Um, and so I, I want to build that. Yeah, it's all it, listen. That so resonates with me because listen, I I do sales training, I do leadership training. That's what I do, and I'm I'm telling people all the time that the the silver bullet to success is not your gadget. It's not because the cost of entry for having a great product that's a cost of entry now. Like everybody's product's great because if it's not, it doesn't last. There's too much competition where if you're not great, you fall by the wayside. And so the idea is. Everything's level. The one silver bullet you have, the only the greatest tool you have to your success is you. You can't replace. I, I tell every sales guy when I hire them, and it's, these are not my lines. I didn't create them. Is you know, all things being equal, people buy from people they like. All things being unequal, people still buy from people they like. Like I don't have to be the lowest price provider. If people like me and trust me and believe in me and know that I'm not just there for a transaction, I'm going to win. You know, most of the time, there's always going to be the guy that that wants just to go to the lowest price provider, the reality is it's probably not a good client for me anyway because the second someone's cheaper, it'll be a race to the bottom. You can't replace me. Like I am me, I am different. As, as you've said before, I'm unique. You know, I'm a badass. Like I take that into my sales approach. So, okay, you know, look, and now I'm at the point where I, I say, look, you wanna go deal with someone else? Like, go ahead, like you can. If you want, there's other people out there, there's a big market, but if you wanna deal with me and my passion and my heart, how I'm going to care about you and your business, then you get me. You get Paul Faust. Um, and if you don't like that, I understand. So, so you think, so, so uh, like, and I think, I think you can already see anybody that's listening to this and knows me already knows why we connect on such a, uh, such a beliefs level so quick because I feel the same way. And I think it's, I think the challenge with self-promotion, and we'll get into your business and how you started it, but the challenge with self-promotion is this idea that, I shouldn't promote myself. Self promotion is bad, and it's ego, and it's it's you know it, to me it's it's proud it's it's pride, and it's it's one of the seven, seven deadly sins. And I'm thinking to myself, you have it all wrong though, right? So ego for me is 
when you believe that you are better than some other individual, like I, I am a better human being than you. I don't think I'm better than any other human being, but I'm certainly not worse than any other human being. And I, I'm different. I'm unique, and I'm going to brand that. I, I, I'm unique in my way, and I think it's the opposite. I think it's all about my personal brand. I think people don't do it. Um, you know, it's not about ego for me. It's about this is who I am. This is what I'm about. This is how much I care. And you know, I'm not. I don't deliberately want to make somebody feel bad or if you don't like me, like I want to tell me what you don't like. But I mean, look, you know, uh, been at a retreat. There's some people who think I'm a little loud and crazy and uh, this is me. Like I I am who I am. This is how I act. It's real. It's genuine. And so I, like, I want to promote it. I was talking to a business friend of mine. I said, look, I know what I'm really strong at. And I also know what I'm really weak at. I really, one of my goals is to study the things I'm really weak at and I want to get better at them. And, and he said to me, why? He goes, why don't you just, you know what you're, you're the best at? Keep getting better at that. Hire people to do, the, like if you're not good with the numbers, get someone who's good with the numbers. <laughs> Paul, be Paul. Do what you do really well and be you and be authentic. I think too many people are, are inauthentic. I so I don't find anything wrong with, this is me. Yeah. And, and it separates me from everybody else that's just trying to appease someone else. Like stop worrying about what everybody thinks. Yeah. Like, and I, don't, and I don't say that like stop worrying about everybody thinks be mean to people, be rude to people. Stop caring. If this is what's good for you, be you. Because yeah. you're the only you out there, right? There is no other me out there. Yeah, so true. I just finished a book called The Courage to Be Disliked. Such an amazing book. And I there, I read it because the, I was in the bookstore and it immediately caught my eye, the, the title. It's The Courage to Be Disliked. So I started reading it in the, in the bookstore and I'm like, oh, I can't put this down. So I buy it. And I read it straight through. And, and what it says basically is, it takes a lot of courage to be disliked because so many people want to try to make everybody happy and they lose their own self-identity in that. And what happens is you end up living your life unhappy because you're trying to make everybody else happy rather than just having courage to say, listen, there are going to be people that don't like me, don't want to buy from me, don't want to do business with me. And as long as it's all, for me, it's all about intentionality. Would you agree? Like, what's yeah, your that, intent? That, that, that's okay unless you don't like me because I'm doing something wrong. If I'm doing something um, to insult you, to hurt you, to, but if you don't like me just because of my personality, usually it has nothing to do with me. Usually it's your own insecurities. Um, you know, it's something that you don't like. Hey, he's loud. He's getting attention. He's he's a little crazy for me. It's not about really not liking me. It's their own thing. And even the people that don't like me, for whatever, it's okay. Mm -hmm. I would say there's a good portion of them that have a misunderstanding. They think I'm a certain way and they think my comments, my words, my actions are one thing. But when we sit down and talk, they'll say, oh, Paul, you know, I thought you were phony. I thought you were this. But now that we've gone out, I see that you really are this way. You are, you, you know, you are kind of crazy. You do care about people. It's not just a show. This is your authentic this self. This is me. Like yeah. when I, you know, I, I just got back from a trade show and I organized everybody to go out one night. And people are like... You know, and, and they're all having fun. And they're like, what's the matter? Uh, uh, you know, I'm like, no, everything's fine. I'm having fun. If everyone's having fun, don't worry about it. And they see that this is, I do really care. You might see me from a distance being loud and crazy in this. It's not arrogance. It's not cockiness. It's not ego. This is who I am. And I, I love what I'm doing. I love the clients I work with. I love the business I'm in. I love that I get to talk to business owners. So even that group that doesn't like you, stop worrying about it. Um, if something's really bothering, why not just, you know, if there's an elephant in the room, introduce it. Hey, something's not right here. What's going on? Right. And you'll find out that most of the time it's a misunderstanding that you didn't connect right. right. And then when they understand, you'd be like, you know what? I'm glad we talked through. Well, then we talked it through. So let's, so let's talk about, let's circle back. Okay. Let's, let's go back and talk about your company and how you started. Because you're, one thing you, we, we're going to talk, continue to talk about connection and how you right. make connection and personal branding. But one thing you also are is a crazy, awesome entrepreneur. Like you. you have this idea, like somehow I've known you for a couple months now and all of a sudden, like you're like, oh no, I'm, I'm going into business here. I started this company, I'm doing this business. And the idea, so let's talk about ringboost.com, which listen, this is, this is when you told me, when we had that first call and you told me what Ring Boost was, I was like, what? That's really a, that's really that's really a thing. And here you are, fifteen years later, with a with a multi million dollar company that's unbelievably successful. That really is to me, it's just it's mind boggling. I love to tell you about. It. Let me back up a little bit so I don't get in trouble because my 
partner, Greg, who is the CEO of the company. I'm not the CEO. Yeah. I'm a co-founder. I'm, I'm the so. president now, but he's the CEO. Um, I met him playing softball. You know, they talk about, you know, lucky and opportunities. I went to school, studied economics. I met a guy playing softball. And we happened to go to a softball tournament together. And he told me, I'm selling my company. And this is what I'm starting. And I said what you did. Wait a minute. That's a business? So what Ringboost does is we help business owners get phone numbers that they can use in their marketing. So when you see uh, 1-800-CABLE-TV, 1-800-HURT-NOW, you know, um, 914-222-HELP, or, uh, you know, we're in the business of helping people get good phone numbers using their marketing. So when I met my partner who was starting the company, he was he had literally just about to start it. I said, what? That's a business? Like, I don't even get it. And then we talked for about a half an hour. And I said, oh my God. It's the coolest thing. Like, if I known this, I wouldn't have got to college. I just would have done this. So we started talking on the flight to a tournament, and I started writing ideas down, and he said, dude, you obviously get it. Why don't you join me? So I made a plan, left my career of uh, 11 years where I was the top sales guy in the industry, and we start, and, and started the business with him. And so, you know, our core little piece of the world is, hey, look, business owner, you're doing all this stuff right. You know, you chose your name. You chose your logo. You chose your domain, you chose your social media presence, your tagline. You probably even picked the paint color in your office. <laughs> and then you went to the phone company and said, just chuck me any seven digits, don't care. Next one off the pile. And we said, that's insane. If you're a home care agency and you're marketing home care, what, why wouldn't you want 1-800-HOME-CARE? If you're a lawyer and you market that we fight for our clients, why not use 888-WE-FIGHT? So we started looking at saying, hey, why not do something that could be more memorable, stand out in a crowded field of marketing? And it's so simple. When I talk to people about it, they go, wow, that's pretty simple. Because look, if you're on radio, TV, billboards, um, any kind of, look, look, you're driving by a billboard at 60 miles an hour, you're going to remember a random number. Um, but even for people that don't market a lot, TV, radio, billboards, all that stuff, what about just referral sources? Hey, I need a good uh, sales trainer for my company. Oh, I know a good guy. What's his number? I don't know. Then they go online and look you up, and they might find you, but they also might find your competition. So we are such a simple um, addition to the marketing mix that people just either overlooked or were never taught to think about. Um, but when they think about it, they go, wow, that makes a lot of sense. And there was just a hole in the market where people weren't providing it. So we said, you know, we're going to start off. So we started out, it was only toll-free numbers. Vanity numbers like wanted your home care, wanted your hospice, wanted your cable TV, wanted your hurt now. We look for businesses that were um, marketing centric, fragmented, that you know, we could break up by market, and we started licensing. And then over the next five, 10 years, we had people say, Look, I don't want vanity number. I like easy digits. I don't want a word. I just want, you know, 222 2828. I just, so we added those. And then I had people say, I don't want toll free. I want a great local number. So we said, well, let's be honest. At first, we said that's the dumbest thing in the world. You know, like, you know you're not always brilliant. You know, you say, "Nah, we're toll free guys." And then two years later, we said to ourselves, "You know, I was stupid. Like, why are we alienating? You know, a huge well, chunk of the market?" So we we launched a local number company, first one ever do it to say you chose all these things about your business, right? Why not choose your number two? It could be your single biggest marketing tool, but yeah. it's certainly one of the arrows in you know in your quiver. Oh yeah. So. A lot of times I go to conferences, I could sit here and say, here's all the whys, right? But why don't we just go to the other side? Why not? It's a, let's have a quicker conversation. Why not, right? You're, you, you plan this, you plan this, you plan this, you plan this, you pay for this, you hire a consultant for this, you plan this, you plan this. Why not choose a number you like that's memorable, resonates, stands out, ties into your brand, your tagline, you know, 100 giddy up, you know, why not? <laughs> you know, it's just saying, it's like, I would make my number, you know, my local number giddy up just because it's fun. Yeah. But why not? There's only two why nots. One is you don't believe that having a number that stands out that's memorable is going to get you more response or make it easier to reach you. And if you don't believe that, then I, I haven't done my job because it's sort of, you know, sort of apparent. Yeah. Or you can't afford it. And the reality is we have numbers that we license for, you know, $10 a month. And we have local numbers that could be $100. And then we have ones that go up to thousands of dollars. So it's affordable for every business owner. We work with the biggest Fortune, you know, 500 companies in the in the country, and literally not even local mom and pops. I'm talking about local dog walkers. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah. We're a tool that I'd say, why not? Yeah. So it's, you know, it's a really simple tool. 
It's crazy. I'm saying, how many numbers do you think you have? You have ported. Is that the name? Uh, ported, licensed, provided. We yeah. tens of thousands. Um, we have agencies that come in and need tracking numbers. So they want 50 numbers, 100 numbers. We have clients that focus on one number. We have clients that get one number, then they realize how great it was for their campaign, and they want something else to tie into another part of their brand. And the, and the whole, look, I'm a big fan of digital marketing, social media marketing, and all this stuff, but it's a, it's a constantly changing world, right? The rules change every day. You have to be a degreed expert to understand it. You got to hire. Right when you get it right, they move the ball, right? Yeah. It's a website. It's MySpace. It's Link. It's not those links. It's other links. It's content. It's not content. It's this content. It's not these links. No, it's MySpace, Facebook, Instagram. Like they keep moving the game. Phone numbers. The field goals. The field goals just keep getting moved. And you never get it right. right. Yeah. They haven't changed phone numbers since I've been alive. I'm, I'm almost fifty. Everybody knows how to use them. You don't need to be a degreed expert. You could deploy it tomorrow with zero cost. I can literally put it on my email signature tomorrow. I can add it to my website. I can go to my social network and say, hey, check out my new number. Like, it's simple to use. Everyone knows how to dial a phone. So I get that we all have to do the digital stuff and Snapchat, Instagram, and who's next. But why not also use a phone number that matters to you? And it could be a word or it could be a phrase or it could be, you know, my number, my direct line is 914-200-0013. Why? Because I like the number 13. Somebody else might not like it. I love it. So that's why I picked it. It yeah. means something to me. So, you know, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to go out and spend tens of thousands of dollars uh, to get a number you like, but find something that matters to you because you, you might change web providers. You might change it. Most people don't change their number. So mm -hmm. why not get something, run with it, make it yours, incorporate it into your marketing, which ultimately, for most business owners, will ultimately drive more calls. And I believe, and, and we could debate this all day long, that's the best way to land a client. Mm -hmm. A lot of people research on the web and get a lot of information, but if I want to make certain decisions, I'm not hiring a sales consultant on the web. I want to ultimately talk to someone. Or if I go to a room with personal injury attorneys and I say, look, you have two choices. Somebody find your practice on the web or they call you. How many, which would you rather a web form or call you? And every hand will go up for it. I want them to call me. Why? Because they know that if someone calls them, they will sign them as a client because they'll convince them that the right attorney, you know, they empathize and they'll sign. I'm like, so why are you driving everyone to the web? Why wouldn't you also drive them to just get on the phone with you? Yeah, because there's a, I think there's a, I, I don't know, this is so great because I'm a sales guy. I love sales. I, I think it's, if not the greatest profession in the world, one of the greatest professions in the world. And I think there's this, this misnomer or uh, misconception about, how people want to do sales now. And they they say, well, people don't want to be called. They want to be emailed. They don't want to be emailed. They want to be text. They don't listen. And I, I, I've always subscribed to the fact that if you want something to move slow, send an email. You want something to happen now, call them. But there's a lot of people have this fear of calling this telephobia where they're not using the phone and they don't see the value in the phone. You but know why? It's, it's, what is that? I'll tell you why. Because a voice is immediate. People can hide behind an email or a text. If you send me something, I could think about the answer. I could formulate the answer. When you talk to someone, it's right here and now. It's personal. So when I call you and I give you a price, you could say, wow, you know, you could disagree with me. You can, and I have to be prepared to have that conversation. Oh, yeah. People are afraid of that. I love that. They're afraid of that conversation. I'm not afraid because I love what I do and I think well, I provide a fair price for a great service, but I'm not afraid of communication. And Look, you know, I'm trying to get more into the science of our business because there are people who just need that because uh, they have to. The fact is that people can type on average maybe 30, 40 words a minute. Um, and if you're talking about small screens, we're all going to phones, it's even slower and cumbersome. And you could hear maybe 100 words a minute. Well, I could talk, especially me, 400 <laughs> words a minute. So why wouldn't I talk to you? Also, uh -huh. when I talk to you, there's intonation. There's emotion. Uh -huh. right? You don't get that. There's no... I wanted to create it as a new business. So if somebody's listening, they can copy and steal the model. I wanted to create a a, a, um, uh, a font that's like an intonation font. So like someone knows you're sarcastic, yeah. but I can hear you. I can hear your concerns. I can hear the intonation in your voice, the worry, the fear. I can get to the bottom of the real, what's as opposed to an email. No, don't get me wrong. There is a time and a place oh. for an email. Time and a place for a quick text. But there's also a time place. I'm going to go back and forth. I'll just pick up the phone and say, hey, let's talk. Let's work it out. I could take the negative. I could take the bad, the good. And I think, but I think a lot of people are just afraid of it. 
Um, and I think it's holding them back. Yeah. Stop being afraid. Yeah, I, uh, uh, man, I, I could not <laughs> agree more. I just had a conversation with a great sales team today, and we were talking about, it was a video call, and we were talking about objections. Customers giving you objections and how you deal with them. You got to you gotta overcome them. And to me, I said to him, I said, the greatest sales professionals in the world are the masters of overcoming objections. And they see objections as a good thing, as a dialogue to move the move the client, move the guest, move whoever you're selling to further down the process. Where most people, they get an objection, they're like, oh my God, I can't believe they told me they can't afford it or they can't, they're not right at time or whatever. And I, that's just a signal that says, "Hey, let's go. Tell let's me more. Tell me more. You haven't. Yeah. You haven't told me enough. I'm not understanding enough. I want the objections. Yeah. Like when people don't buy from me, I'm like I, I, it's not fair to say I love it, but I say, okay, look, I totally understand. Thank you for your time. Can I ask you just one quick question? I want to be better at what I do. Can you tell me why? Was it the price? Was it you don't believe in the service? Was it me? Like, it's. I want to know so I can get better. Yeah. So I, I don't mind it, but also, people might give you an objection. But that's not the real objection. Really so is. when they type it, it is what it is. When they say it, I could, you know, I you can kind of get is this real or is, is this is, is a smokescreen? Is there something behind it? But I can I can talk through it in a conversation. Yeah. With emotion, with intention, with um, all this other stuff, and really get to, you know, I could pry a little bit and maybe crack them open a little bit. But I have to be willing to do it. Yeah. Um, and the other thing, it's just you know, planning on writing a book. Um, but the concept is, you know, your voice matters. Like, mm. voice matters. And when I say voice, I'm not talking about you have to have a memorable number. Look, I think it's it's good. But my voice matters. If I could just do everything with a text and email and an and a, a AI and an Autobot, then my Autobot could talk to your Autobot and we'll never do anything. And no one knows who I am and I could just hire a team of people to just automate garbage. Like, I want to talk to you. Because a lot of times what you're thinking might not be the best for you. But I want to talk, figure it out. And maybe there's a time and a place where I say, you know what? This this isn't right now. We should do this. But I could build that relationship because I, I also think, and I've heard this from other people, that the art and the days of transactional selling are dead. Like mm. that's, a, that's a bad model. Bad. Bad, bad, bad model. model. I don't want to be in it. Um, I've talked, like now I used to go to trade shows and I'd sit at the booth and you were not leaving my booth until you either bought from me or basically punched me and said, I hate you or get security. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm at a trade show. I don't even sell. You come to my booth. I meet you. I say, hello. Hey, great to meet you. Blah, blah, blah. Look, what, all right, here's my card. Look, these guys are here for something else. They're here for courses. They're here to learn. They're here to hear speakers. They're not here to sit in vendor alley and get vomited on. So I said, look, I'm glad you came by. I got your information. Tell me what you're looking for. Good. Go to your conference. Let's talk when you're settled. And... A lot of sometimes people come to my booth and I say, tell me what you do, blah, blah. All right, look, let me walk you to another booth. And I'll walk them away from my booth to someone else that they need to talk to first. But they realize that I care and I'm building value and it's not a sales piece. Yeah, so so good. And that leads me to my next part, which is this whole idea of connection. I think one of the, and I said at the beginning that your superpower is connection. I'm finding now is the more we talk, the more we meet the sales really is a superpower too. And I'm, a, again, uh, I could see and talk sales with you all day, but I think all of this revolves around sales, but this art of connection, you seem to be the seven degrees of, and I have another friend, Chris Hartley, great guy, same thing, who's a great connector, but you seem to really take this to a whole nother level, this art of connection where if somebody needs something, it may not be you, but I'm going to put you in touch with the right person. You why, call me. Why is that? Like you're everybody. You know what? You know when you have a um, your car needs work, you call a friend. You're like I got a guy. I need I a, you know you got you need a painter. I don't. I got a guy. I, I, I tried to get gotaguy.com for years. I tried, it's taken. <laughs> um, I want if if you're in my world, I want you to call me for anything you need. Right. Go back to what you do for a living. I don't want you struggling to figure it. Call me. Because I want to help you. One, because I actually care. I care about you. I care about your business. I care about your employees. I care. And in the long run, is it completely selfish? No. I mean, I know that if I do it right and I provide value, um, you might never be my client because you might never need me. But you know what? When the time's right, when you connect with someone, you know, I just got a call yesterday from a, a woman that runs one of the big trade shows I go to twice a year. I don't always take a booth. We haven't always seen eye to eye on things called me yesterday because someone called her the one time it said I need a number and she said you got to call Paul and you know what I did? called the client I called her back today and I said I'm talking to your client I'm taking care of him and by the way I got something for you 
and I introduced her to one of my friends who could help her. So to me, first of all, I love people. I care about people. Like, it's real for me. I'm a volunteer fireman. I have been for a while. I've run American Cancer Society charity event. I do a lot of charity. I actually care. So I love people. I love their stories. And I get more satisfaction. I've said this for years. You could have, I, I mean, I'll put you on the phone with 100 friends. I get more satisfaction. If I can introduce, introduce you to someone and you can close a deal to be, you know, their sales consultant trainer and you book that business, nothing in it for me. It's more satisfying to me personally, emotionally for the goal of my life than if I close my own sale. Mm. Now, I have to close my own sales because I have a, you know, a wife and kids and college bills and a mortgage, but I enjoy it. And ultimately, because it's who I am authentically, it comes around. Uh, I can tell you a true story. I was at a trade show uh, a year and a half ago, took a booth, you know, all and it's 10 grand by the time you get a booth, hotel flight, no business. Nobody came to the booth. I wasn't selling anything. I walked over that I built a relationship with, never sold him anything. We've talked. I've helped him out with stuff. He walked the guy to the booth. I'm like, hey, how are you, Bob? Uh, I mean, I'd say the guy's full name, but I don't, know, I don't know if he wants me to talk about it. Walked the guy over. I said, what's up, Bob? Bob said, hey, this is my friend. He needs to get phone numbers. Um, this is Paul. You're not leaving the booth until you buy numbers. You have to have them for your marketing. But right there in the booth, the guy signed for $65,000 with the phone numbers. Had nothing to do with my exhibit, my marketing, my... My awesome personality that day, my tagline, my pricing, it had to do with building a real relationship for years and years and years and expecting nothing. Yeah. Helping someone, guiding him, talking to him, calling him and saying, hey, I'm going to the straight shows or anything you want me to get for you. Never try to sell him anything. But the time was right. I never asked for it. He brought someone over and, and made a huge sale and now I've got another client. Incredible. So to me, that's where a lot of salespeople... Um, falter they're just trying to close the immediate i need to close a sale today no you don't you know slow down there's a there's a longer scope of relationship here and there's a time not to sell yeah there's a time not to close the deal yeah. there's a time to guide someone well that's close that's closing the, like you're the idea of your the return on investment the roi on being that connector isn't it paid in that in that circumstance sixty five thousand dollars? But let's say the sixty five thousand dollars sale never comes in, right? It's still paid. It paid it's I, it's still paid int intrinsically to your personal fulfillment, the, right? The relationship, the the friendship, yeah. the personal fulfillment that I help somebody, I, you know, and and that helps me, and I feel better about it. I feel better about the way I live. Mm -hmm. I feel better about the way I act. I feel better about the lessons I'm teaching my kids. And at the end of the day, it comes around. And you know what? If it doesn't. That's okay too, because I'm not going to change how I am. Oh, yeah. So now, and the reality is somewhere down the road, it does come around. It might not be a business deal. It might not be economically, but it might be when I'm doing a charity and somebody steps up and writes a check because they knew that I cared. It, it, who knows, but I'm never going to change who I am and what matters to me and how I want to live my life. Um, so it's authentic and real. And the reality is that comes across to people. So ultimately you will sell more. You will actually close business because people want to do business with you when they see that you're real. And that's what you're about. I have guys that I've known in the trade show world or clients that have never bought from me. It's been five, six, seven years. Doesn't mean they won't call me to ask me about something. That's okay. Yeah. Because I enjoy doing it. Yeah. So this is a, it's such a great reminder of being mission-minded, not commission-minded. Exactly. Like you're, you're on this mission. I'm on a mission. The, and, and, the idea that some, if, if you're chasing the commission, if you're chasing the money, it's it's never going to come because that's you're not thinking connection. You're thinking immediate return today. And you might get it. Yeah, but sometimes. You, but you you'll get it sometimes. Um, you might get it a lot of times. But that's it. You're not building a friendship. You're not building. You want that one transaction, or do you want all their friends, all their connections? I want to build. Like I would. Someone told me once. You know, do you want to do 100% of your own efforts or 1% of 100 people? I want to do 1% of 100 people plus my own efforts. So I have an army out there. While I'm sitting here doing this podcast with you, I've got hundreds and hundreds of hundreds and hundreds of people that care about me, that are keeping their ears open for me, that might say, hey, you got to call Paul. But if all you're doing is chasing the commission, chasing the transaction, no, no one's doing that for no, you. No. So I, by being real, by caring, by not focusing on the transaction. Well, let's be honest. I want to close business. I have bills to pay and a family. Yeah. But by not focusing on it, I've built a world of people to help me do it so I don't have to. Like they always talk about, you know, you're the lion or the gazelle. You got to wake up and run. 
No, sometimes I could just chill by the waterhole because <laughs> I've, I've built an army of people out there that I know are keeping their eyes out for me because I've provided value to them. Yeah. In some part of their life, it might not be business. It might be that, uh, that I helped with their charity. It might be that I spent an hour on the phone call because they were having a tough time in, uh, you know, in their relationship. And I, I'm not an expert in everything, but sometimes people just need an ear. Mm. Sometimes people need guidance. So I, I'm that way authentically with everybody. Most of the people that know me know if the chip, you call me and I'll be there for you. One way or the other, I'll get there. So to me, I'm building um, a whole network a future client base so it's not the one, tra- I don't want the one transaction. I tell people all the time, I, I, I don't, I'm not in this for one deal. I'm in this for everything. Plus I learn a lot. I become better at what I do. I become better at, at, at being a salesperson, about being a business owner, about being a father. Look, I'm a, like you taught me one lesson uh, the last time we were together at a retreat that I incorporated into my family life and I'm seeing a change in what? Three days? <laughs> My son sent me, he goes, you're right, I am a badass. Like, but I've never sold you anything. You've never sold, I'm, right. you know, I've never sold you. Right. We just, we but just, I'm. We're connected. And that's going to change lots of relationships. I'm going to I'm gonna tell everybody about that. It will build my overall value to the world, to my clients. And at the end of the day, that will help me build my business or whatever business I go into. It doesn't matter. Well, think about it. So this is so, so, it's so true. I'm saying we don't, we haven't done business together, but it, the minute that I who, who's I interviewing, I was interviewing somebody. I was interviewing Jesse Isler. Maybe it was after the interview, and he's like, "You got to yeah. talk to Paul Faust." Right. And I was like, "Paul Faust," because we weren't in the same seminar together. We but we met through that through Jesse Isler. He's like, "You got to talk to Paul Faust," and I'm like, "All right." So I looked you up online, and I. I called you or I reached out somehow. I was like, somehow I reached out on Facebook yeah. or something like that. Jesse hey, said you're a badass. We yeah, got to connect. Yeah, that's exactly right. Jesse said you're a badass. We got to connect. And then like an hour later, a couple of hours later, we're on the phone and you would have thought we knew each other forever. Right. right? We're talking for hours and now we text and talk and in, in the same mastermind group. And like, but there's never been a transaction. Never. And, and there's never been a transaction with me and Jesse. I, I, I joined his group and his, uh, you know, BYLR program and family. And unlike people who just signed up and listened to the calls, I got engaged. You know, I talked to Jesse. I gave him suggestions. I connected with people in the group and said, how can I help you? I got on the chats and like, I was posting every day. Like, that's awesome. So it obviously made a connection. I've never tried to sell anything to anybody in the group. In fact, I've given things away to people in the group. But that obviously resonated enough with Jesse where he said, hey, call Paul Faust. He's the guy you got. You got to connect with him. Yeah. And now you and I have a, you know, a great friendship. Oh, yeah. At the second I, I've said to you, all right, I'm going to find out who who I can introduce you to that you can do consulting with because I think your material is brilliant. It's it's resonated with me. But we've never. It was never about that. It was just yeah. we connected because we care about the same stuff. Yeah. And I could tell you that we're going to look back on this. We'll do a podcast again in five years. We're going to be in worlds different from this relationship. Oh, no question. Because we built a relationship, not a sale. Oh, I agree. And we connect on, and this is what's so important. And Simon Sinek said it in one of his TED Talks or one of his talks. And he said, the goal is not to do business with people that want what you have. The goal is to do business with people that believe what you believe. And to me, that was so profound. Because if you just do business with people that want what you have, you're only as good as the transaction. But if you do business with people that believe what you believe, they'll go out and they'll literally sell you cars for you like you were talking about. And so we connected, and I said in the beginning, on a belief level. Right. But what does it take to connect on that belief level? To really get to know somebody. Like we've known each other for a couple months now, but we've connected on a, on a very high belief level, we talk all the time. We, you know, we were just in Atlanta together last week. Uh, you know, what what does it take? Do you think for for you to be able to connect on that beliefs level? Uh, well, I think first of all, you have to be authentic. You have to be you, and you have to be vulnerable. Like you can't go in with, "Hey, this guy's a sales guy. I have to pretend to be a super sales guy, and I have to be at his level." But no, this is me. This is what I'm about. I'm authentic. I care, and I, and I'm vulnerable and open. And I'm not trying, I have no agenda. I just met someone great and I said, you know, you contacted me. Obviously I resonated with Jesse that he said contact me. That was good enough for me. And then you and I talked and I'm like, this no one's trying to sell anything here. No. Just two people, but I was who I was. Yeah. I wanted to, I cared about who you were and what you were about and how um, we could connect. And I think part of what I've learned over the past, you know, I guess look, as I get older, more mature and grow up a little bit is, um, 
I'm going to cut out the negative. Like the people who are just dragging me down or, or uh, wasting my emotional energy that, there's, that there's, they're just users or they don't really care. Um, I don't need that. I want to be around people who are like us. So I think like-minded people will eventually find each other. And you're going to find a lot of people. But I think the people who think like we do and care the way we do will really connect. I mean, well, look, we've met in, in the group that you and I met in. I met 100 people. There's 10 that I really talk to that, that, you know, it is just the, I know they're like me. Yeah. I know they're authentic. Like they're, like they're hawking me. Like, how could I help you? And I'm like, you, you don't have to, but they want to. Yeah. And I think that's what, you know, we, uh, when I, you know, the first time we had the call, I'm like, dude, it's, it's like, this is a guy that I want in my world because yeah, sure. I'm going to be better. Not, I never, I don't even think we know that I knew what you did. I'm not, I'm going to be a better sales guy. I'm going to sell more stuff. It was, I'm going to be a better person. I'm going to be a, a better human and that's going to make me better all over. Yeah, I love that. And I think what you said, I love that. And I think what you said about um, being vulnerable, to me, that's the greatest strength a human being has. Besides gratitude, it's this ability to be vulnerable. But I don't even think you can be vulnerable if you don't have gratitude. But this idea of being vulnerable is... Not coming into a relationship, any relationship, whether it's a professional sales relationship, whether it's a friendship, shield up and sword out. You have to, you have to, you have to be disarmed. Right. And I think the challenge is so way, way too much. People are they're they're going into relationships skeptical or expecting something back, or they're shield up and sword out, and they're like. Well, once this person proves it to me, right. I'll lay it down. No, I go but, the other way. Uh, yeah, I'm laying it down right at the beginning until you until you. Till you, till you screw me, until you're dishonorable yeah. to me. Yeah. And then if you're dishonorable me, I'm moving on. Excuse me. Even if it might mean walking away from a piece of business, I'm thinking about the bigger picture. I don't want this deal. I don't want to be around dishonorable people. But if you go in, just, you know, hands open, like, I've got nothing. i got no agenda. Let's figure this out. As opposed to, there, there's your grenade wall. Here's mine. Maybe we'll peek over a little bit. So I just go in open now, which is different for me. Uh, I, I remember it hit me when I, my daughter um, bat mitzvah was uh, what a, a year ago. And when I gave her speech, I wrote the speech. I put jokes in it because I wanted it to be funny. I didn't want to uh, get emotional. And when I gave the speech, I think within the third word, I was crying. A uh, third word, I was crying like a baby. It, it, it was probably a three-minute speech. It took me 15 minutes because I was crying the whole, the whole time. And what people came up to me at the cocktail hour and said is, wow, Paul, you know, we never saw you like that. Oh, my God. Blah, blah, blah. And that actually... Bo- it bothered me that, um, not that it was nice, but it bothered me like, you know what? I, I, cu- I couldn't show people that side of me that, that he is authentic and he does care. Like, no, open up. Let people know that you're emotional. Let people know that you care about being a dad. Let people know that you have a heart. I mean, people mm-hmm. see it because they know that I do a lot of charity. I'm a firefighter. Like, this is my heart. But why am I? I think people are, hi- are, are hiding themselves behind walls because they're afraid of what other people think. Right, they're afraid that their ego is going to be hurt. They're competing with everybody. And one thing I've learned over the past years, I'm not competing with you. I'm competing with myself. I'm, you know, you, I'm no longer like I look at everybody. He's got more than I do. So what? I am competing to be the best me I could be. And if I can keep doing that, I'll live a great life. I don't have to be you. I am not you. Well, you know what? It's what did Jess say? Whenever talk, no one's going to care in a hundred years. Like in a hundred years, no one's going to care if Paul Faust fell on his face. No one's going to care if Paul Faust made it any of himself. So now I go out and I act like the way I act because I love it. And you know what? Used to be a lot, you know, maybe embarrassed by it. Or I tell my kids, you know, I tell my kids now, uh, you want to dance, dance. You feel like singing. I'll walk down the street and sing. So what if people look at me weird? You think they're going to they're gonna know me in 10 minutes? Yeah. So I think that being open, being vulnerable, living um, the way I do now is just, it's made life more enjoyable. To cut out the negative, be authentic, go and open. And that doesn't mean... Let people walk over you. Let people hurt you. That doesn't mean that at all. It just means go in there without the expectations. Go in there without the defenses up. Go in there authentically and see where it goes. And I think it's changed my outlook on a lot of things. And and I'm living better. I'm enjoying the ride more. Yeah. Because you can't... This was an important lesson I learned during, um, you know, kind of being in New York right after 9-11. And, and I responded down to the towers. It's that I really thought about it. There was a lot of guys down there that... We're working in Wall Street and figured, you know what? I'm going to bust my ass and I'm going to make fortunes of money. And then I can retire when I'm 40 and go spend the time with my family and kids and enjoy my life. They didn't make it, right? They didn't make it. There isn't, like, you got to enjoy the ride. 
I can't say I'm going to bust my this and be miserable until I'm, I'm turning 50. I'm 60. Then, I'm, then I can go enjoy my life. I want to enjoy the whole ride. <laughs> like, I want to enjoy today. Like, you know, came down to do this with you. Brought my friend down. We're going to go see a concert tonight. Like, I'm enjoying the ride. That doesn't mean not being responsible. It means enjoy every day. I don't know what tomorrow. I don't know if I get tomorrow. Like, I joke all the time that I wake up every morning and I go, eyes open. I go, oh, look at that. I got one more. Yeah. I got one more. One more day to make stuff happen, to have fun, to live my life, to be a good person. And, and I'm trying to cherish those moments. So I think that's how I'm living differently. Whereas everything to me was, what's the future going to bring? So I carried a lot of stuff with me, thinking out, thinking back, you know, not being where my feet are. And I, I think it's changed my perspective. And at the end of the day, none of it was conscious to make me a better entrepreneur or business person. It just has. Yeah. Right? Like I think you said, like, I had to change my mindset. That changed my behavior. It wasn't changed my behavior. I went up the stream a little bit based on you know, some of the stuff you talk about. Yeah. So you, so you, yeah. And, that, and here's what the thing is. Like, not only think about it. So have that mindset shift. Not only are you better at work, but you're better everywhere else. Right? So yeah. the right mindset transcends where you are in your life. Doesn't, I don't care if it's professional, personal. It does like The right mindset is the right mindset. Health, wellness, relationships. I've, I, the best comment I ever got was... Uh, I think maybe six months ago, I went to a trade show and a, 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 a woman named Jenny came over to me. She'll know she is if she hears this. She said to me, Paul, I just got to tell you, it seems like you're aging backwards. <laughs> Benjamin Buttons. And about, like, a Benjamin, like she said, it seems like you're aging backwards. And I pulled her aside later that night and I said to her, I just got to tell you, that was probably the, the greatest compliment I've gotten in a while. Like, or maybe my whole life. Because she noticed that I'm eight, like... I'm not getting older and more tired and cranky and more jaded and more cynical. I'm getting happier. I, I enjoy what I do more. I'm trying to enjoy life more. And I always did. Like, I'm, I'm pretty, but I had anxiety and stress and, you know, dealt with the negative. And when people would, you know, would come at me, I would get behind my grenade wall and start lobbing back at them and all that. I push a lot of that out. Now, look, I still have work to do. I still, you know, have work to do with, you know, my family, personal life. But, you know, to sell someone, it seems like you're aging backwards. Right. Well, that that's a mindset shift. It's not. It's not a business shift. It's how I'm gonna live because you know, you know, my relationship with time and, and what I'm doing every day and not wasting it. And I I love it and all that stuff. Having nothing. I didn't hire a sales trainer. I didn't read business training books. How to close more deals. I just worked on living my life better. And because of that. Business is going better. Yeah. You know, sales are going better. Companies growing. Yeah. So I'm saying we, and you know this from you saw you saw last week in one of the seminars. But you know what we teach is so many people get caught up in the tacticals of how to be better, uh, how to be a better salesperson. Here's the one, two, three steps. How to overcome rejection. Here's the six steps. How to make a million dollars. Here's the five steps. But but what they don't spend enough time on is really the mindset of. How do you be a better? Because if I'm a better human, if I'm a, if I feel better, if my self view is different, I'll get different things. My self view is I feel powerful, I feel enough, I feel uh, worthy. Then you'll do worthy things. You'll do enough things. It doesn't matter. You could literally lay out the the one two threes of how to make a million dollars, and people won't follow it if they don't no. believe it's they're worthy of it. Well, you, and you let's be honest, you won't follow it either. No. If you just write five steps. You're not going to fall. You're going to fall right back into your rut. Correct. So you have to change your whole mindset, how you think about stuff, then worry about changing these five steps. My, now I can look at the five steps much better because I've changed me. Yeah, your perspective um, is and, different. And that's always been out. Look, again, what I've been about, I'll bring it back to the business that I talk about. It's about me. It's about my voice, about who I am and why I care, which is why I, you know, I have to like, I talk to business owners all the time. I'm like, don't hide behind technology and and chat bots and emails and text. Get on the phone with people. Talk to them. And, you know, it's it's just, you know, one part of the business and one way to really, you know, expand who you are and get to know people on a personal level. I, a lot of times I take a call from a client. 80% of the call, we're talking about everything else. It's almost like we have to back up and get to the sale. Like the sale's the afterthought now. Yeah. Because we're just having two people having a conversation. That's who people want to do business with. So my business is all about Getting people to call you. Make it easier for them to call you. Don't hide behind, not only don't hide by not having a number, feature it. Get the phone to ring, talk to people, get find out what they're about. 
and and you will find the world opens up to you in different ways. It's so true. So true. It's um, it's unbelievable. And I think there's a place for technology. I'm not yes. anti-technology. Absolutely. But I think that when you, somebody just said to me the other day, I travel a lot, and they're like, Chad, are you, are you really excited that you can now check in for your hotel? You don't even have to go to the front desk. You can use your phone as a key. And I, you know, Marriott offers, and I'm a big Marriott guy. I'm like, I never use it. And they're like, but why? And I'm like, because I, after get done traveling a couple of hours on a plane, then driving and speaking all day, I'm away from my family. Right. I want the human interaction at the right. front desk. Like I want to talk to that person. I was in a flight at Dan. Like I'm on a flight. Like that's why I fly JetBlue. I love them. I want to have a conversation. I like to welcome Mr. Faust. And, and it could be. And I'm like, no, it's Paul. And I'll come in and I'll give him. A, I'll give him a knuckles. <laughs> like, like, hey, what's well, like? I'm around people. I love people. Yeah, I don't way. want to be a transaction. I want to walk in the hotel. And a lot of times when you talk to people that way, come on, tell me the truth. You don't walk up to that front desk and they go, you know what? I moved you up to the concierge level. Oh, Paul, I, I let me switch your seat on the plane. You know what? Uh, I'm telling you, it's. I was in. I was in Louisiana last week, two weeks ago, and I was getting ready to go to dinner with clients, and I was standing at the waiting in the lobby for them, and Teresa at the front desk was working, and I said, "Hey, Teresa, how are you?" And I started talking just because I saw her name tag, and I started talking to her, and she said, uh, and I said something about it. It's like, oh man, last night. When I checked in, you guys had this cookie tray over here. And I said, I don't know kind of who made those cookies, but they were unbelievable. Just a kind of a, a comment, a pass, right? A passing comment. Right. So we go to dinner. We go to dinner. And we come back. And we're walking through the lobby. And Teresa's working. She said, Chad, 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 Chad. And I said, yes. She goes, come here. So I come <laughs> over, right? And she's got a brown paper bag, right? And it's folded up really nice. And it's got my name on it. And she goes, here's some cookies for you. She goes, I know you just went to dinner. But enjoy the and I just thought like if if listen it wasn't about the cookies the cookies were good but it wasn't about the cookies it was about that interaction yes. twofold one that that woman Teresa I believe got a lot of um, contribution and significance out of doing that she felt good she about herself felt like right? a hero. she felt like a hero by, by giving you cookies by giving me cookies right and so for me. If I if I just go right to the room, that never happens. Never. You don't build that human. We are in today's day and age. And again, I'm a big fan of technology, but it's come down to hundreds of micro conversations at a time with no real connection, no emotion. I still do it. We have you know we have auto responders after you check out. It says thank you and next step. You got to do all that stuff. I also try and call everybody. I now send video emails, video emails to people to say, hey, this is Paul Fowles. Uh, one of the owners of ringboost.com. Just want—I saw your order come through. I just want to thank you for your business. You'll hear from my team in the next couple of days with instruction on next step. If you don't reach out to us, we'll get you all taken care of. And if you could please do me a favor, please, please tell your friends about us. You know, we're trying to get the word out. Any whatever, I get replies back. Nobody's ever replied back to my autoresponder that said thanks for your autoresponder telling me <laughs> next step. Thanks for my receipt. I get—I can't believe you just sent me a personal email. Now they know who I am. Paul, you got a client for life. That was the greatest touch. You got that with the cookies. Yeah. I get that when I talk to the woman on JetBlue. I again, it's that human. Oh yeah. And guess what? Guess what hotel next time I'm in Louisiana? Uh, I'm staying guess. at. Let me guess. The same, the right. same well, area. She, and you know what? She went home feeling like a hero. Yeah. She didn't buy. You, she didn't really buy you. She didn't pay you stuff. She made you feel better and special Correct. because she listened. You made the connection and she said, you know what? I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to make this guy's day. And you know what? You might have come from you might have come from a sales point where you lost the sale. Yeah. You just lost your biggest client. Where your flight was delayed, right? Someone who you had connection with said, I'm going to make this guy's day better. Yeah. I'm going to give him some cookies. And to me, that's what like ultimately our entire business is about is connect with people. Don't be, don't hide behind, you know, a site or a transaction. Like Talk to people. Get them to call you when the time is right. Look, if somebody just wants to email in, that's okay. Somebody wants to text in, that's okay. When I'm on my live chat, we have live chat on our site, and I'll chat with people. And I and if it goes back one or two times, I'll say, hey, would you like me to call you? And a lot of times I'll go, oh, my God, you're a real person. Like, wait, you're the owner of the company? I, I thought that I was talking to a, a, a company overseas. A bot. A bot. <laughs> or, or they'll say, no, thank you. That doesn't work right now. I'd like to stay on chat. And I say, okay, great. Here's my number in case you ever want to talk. So there's a time and a place. So all I'm almost begging business owners is think about it. Think about 
don't think about your phone number or the phone call as utility. It's not the light switch. It's not the carpet. It's not the paint. It could be your single biggest marketing tool. It could be your single biggest way to build your brand and who you are. So think about it. Don't just take the next thing off the pile. Make it yours. Make it customizable. You know, in this whole world where you're, where, where you're choosing everything, right? Why are you not choosing your phone number two? That's what we do. It's one little piece. I love this. So. I love this. All right, a couple other questions because this yeah. is awesome. Listen, I, I'm, I'm trying to, I have been racking my brain <laughs> for months now trying to figure out what the phone number, my phone number should be. Because it can't be Cannonball because there's too many letters. It can't uh, be in toll-free, but not in local. It can't, it can't be, a, it can be a toll-free Cannonball. Right, because but, you can go over, you know, you can go over the the normal seven after the toll-free part, but. Yeah, but we want local, right? And so I'm going to come up with a great, I don't know we're what gonna it is. Find one. I'm going to find it. Yeah, we're going to find one. And look, in the beginning, it could just be like a personal <laughs> cell phone number that you add to your current number that ends in Chad. Just because I tell people, it's, I don't know what area code, use 301 or something. You know, it could be blah, 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 Chad. Yeah. Um, so. Well, moments. Moments. Yeah, like, you know, it, it could, I tell people all the time, sometimes it's not what you do. You know, some people are like, well, I'm a lawyer. I need car wreck. I need this. No. Do you have a tagline? Like, they might say, we fight. They might say, um, you know, you'll see the guy, the hammer. Or like, sometimes it's your tagline. Sometimes it's what you believe in. Sometimes it's your name. You know, call Paul. Other times it's your, you know, your brand. Why didn't you call Saul? Isn't that, isn't that, call Saul. Why didn't you call Saul? I tried to get it when I knew they were launching his show. Wasn't that, that was an actual show, right? Call Saul? No, it was from uh, Breaking Bad. Then, oh, then it was Bad. Saul, that whatever, the, and uh, oh, yeah. call Saul, and they used it. So you have to think, be creative. Like, it could be giddy up, because you were saying to me all the time. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, man. but here's what it shouldn't be. Here's, here, I'm not going to tell you what it should be. Here's what it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the next number off the pile. Like, I was actually going to make a commercial if I ever decided to shoot commercials. It's going to be, you're going to see a, a, a guy going down the aisle to get married, and uh, the priest or the rabbi, whoever, the officiator doing it, says, do you take this woman to be your off of what? Yes, I do. And then he's going to turn, there's going to be a line of brides, and the next one off the pile is going to come up. <laughs> <laughs> or, you know, you, or you have a baby, and they go, okay, what's the baby's name? And they go to the next na name off the pile. Like, no, choose something <laughs> like. And just like you do with your baby, your wife, your, your domain, do it with your phone number. That's what we're about. I love it. So, That's awesome. Maybe right. I'm crazy. I'll stay, I'll I, stay I crazy. I do think you're crazy, but and I, I think <laughs> I'm, I think I'm going to know the answer to this question. But uh, yeah. uh, where do people find you? They uh, want to do business with you. They want to connect with you. They don't want to do business with you, but they want to connect with you. Where do we connect with you? Um, don't ever call me. No. <laughs> um, the domain is ringboost.com. Um, so you can go to ringboost.com. Look around if you want to have fun. Search, play with stuff. You could also, you know, email me, paulringboost.com. You could also call me, as I said earlier, 914-200-0013. So you can call us. You can email me. Go to the site. Look around. But if you're not sure, you know, I don't expect you to be an expert. You know, I, I, I believe it or not, I actually have had people come to me, get a number, and then I call them back and I switch their number. I say, I don't like that. That's not the right abbreviation for that word. You thought it was a vanity, but it's not. It's bad. And I don't want you to use a bad number. So you can look at the site at ringboost.com, call me, email. I have a whole team. If you're not sure what you want to do, we'll guide you. If you know what you want, go look around. Um, and uh, yeah, that's awesome. And if you happen to you know see this podcast and, and you mention it, I will I'll give you 10% off whatever you do just for mentioning that you saw me in the podcast. What? What? That just happened. It, you Evan, that? Evan, Evan behind the camera, that just happened. Evan, did you hear that? Boom. Boom. This has happened. Boom. So anybody awesome. mentions it, and you can mention Chad. Boom, giddy up, cannonball, <laughs> anything you want, and we'll take care of you. Awesome. All right. Last question. First of all, you got to come back because I think that we could just, I think we could literally just talk about anything. For any throughout a topic, we could have Evan. We could put like fifty topics, and we'll have Evan draw one out. We'll just make it up. We'll just talk about it. That you and I have awesome. to talk that's about th it. That's throwdown style podcast. Whatever that's you what want, throw it out. Throw down podcast. Don't know what the topic. You just pull it out, and we just start. Right, we just start and, rapping about and it. And we'll we'll make it interesting and have fun. Yeah, I like that. And uh, all right, last last question. Okay. So, fifty years, sixty years from now, you're gonna leave this earth. What? Fifty or sixty years, maybe seventy. Right. You're, you're you're Benjamin Button, changing backwards. <laughs> so, what do you want your contribution to have been to this world? I talk about this all the time um, with my kids. My kind of mission my personality is wherever I go I want people to know I was there I don't want to come and go and my kids might you know somebody's like dad you're a little this you're a little crazy like you know what I said but when I leave this restaurant when I leave this movie theater when I leave this train car right when I leave the Starbucks they're gonna know I was there I want people to know I was here because 
you know, in a hundred years, people aren't, you know, for most people, you come, you, you cycle through this life and you're gone. And there's few people out of all the people that you remember that somebody will remember. So I want people to know I was here and that I, you know, I, I did my best for people. I tried to change the world as best I could, but I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that guy. I remember Paul. Like, I, you know, I walked into a Starbucks on the way here and I bought some random guy a coffee. And I try to talk to the person behind the counter and in the, it was a hotel where the Starbucks was and I talked to the people behind the counter about their suits and how cool it was they were all dressed alike. You know what? They know I was there as opposed to all the countless people that walk in, check in and go to their room. I try to talk to every toll booth guy on the way down here. I just want people to know that I was here and maybe make a little bit of difference in their day, in their life, or whatever. That's, you know, I, I would love it at you know, my funeral if, if, you know, they had to sell at a stadium. You know, they said, everyone come to, Come to the funeral, not whether you liked Paul, didn't like Paul, he helped you in business, but come to the funeral if you knew Paul was there. And that's what I want. I want. I don't want to come and go. Love that. That's awesome. Thanks, brother. This is uh, uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, we got to do this again. I'm anytime. sure. We, I'm sure we're gonna do a lot anytime. more of them. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, my friend. But,